Well, Alice Springs residents are tonight facing a second night under curfew following a dramatic surge in crime and violence, including an horrific brawl, including four police officers on Saturday night. Let's ho head over there now where uh, Senator Nampajimpa Price joins us. Senator, you of course have uh, spoken out about the fact that uh, this is not the be-all and end-all, this curfew. You need to work a lot harder on the root causes. But how is the, the feeling in the community over there at the moment? Well, it's the, it's the usual sort of, you know, the community's sick to death of the crime that's been committed over and over again. Uh, you know, people from Alice Springs don't feel safe at night when we go to bed at night. We listen for every sound, you know, could this be someone breaking into our home? We know that our police force is under the pump uh, and it, it just, there doesn't seem to be any real reprieve. Sure, there's another curfew, but it's not actually addressing the underlying problems um, that need to be dealt with uh, within our community. Well, of course, the, um, the, the curfew will end tomorrow night. Tomorrow night will be the, the last of this 72-hour lockdown. So you essentially go back into exactly the same position as you were before. I know the, the police commissioner can then ask to extend it for potentially another seven days, but really, it's not achieving much. Mm. No, it's not. And we still, even when the lockdown is lifted, I mean, we still have to make sure that we get all our shopping done before 7pm every night because uh, the major supermarkets close down because it's unsafe to shop after 7pm when they used to be open till about 10pm. Um, and, you know, our young people, they don't have the sort of um, upbringing in this town now, as certainly I did when I was younger. Uh, you could feel safe going with your friends to the cinema. It's school holidays, so other young people feel like they don't get the opportunity to just live freely in a community because of the behaviour, the, the, the crime that's being committed by others. I know Marion Scrimgore had uh, spoken out in support of a curfew, but Where's the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese? Where's, uh, where's the Indigenous Affairs Minister, Linda Burney? They seem to be very quiet on this issue. But we're, we're very vocal about the voice, but very quiet on this right now. Yeah, absolutely quiet. And they don't have a clue. They absolutely do not have a clue as to how to deal with these really difficult issues in places like Alice Springs uh, and remote communities because they're utterly removed from the circumstances and they're not prepared to sit down and understand the reality um, of what goes on within our communities um, in outback Australia. And that's just the, that's the reality of it. The sooner we get rid of this government, the sooner we can actually start applying some serious measures going forward to alleviate some of these problems uh, and, and to help our most marginalised in practical terms. And, you know, it, it frustrates me, and I, I know it, it frustrates you as well, Senator, but um, to watch people talk so much, and by people I mean those like the Prime Minister and Bernie, to talk so much about how they care about Indigenous affairs and they want the best for Indigenous people. And the rubber hits the road and they really do nothing about it. And then you have people like you and me, who others, you know, spuriously claim to be racist in some way, sitting here saying, no, hang on, like, th these are the lives of children initially and, and then adults who get ruined by a lack of intervention and a lack of help and no jobs and not going to school, etc. And all we're trying to say is that if you mm. really want to help people, you've got to help them from the start and you get shouted down for doing it. That's exactly right. I mean, the, this Labor government, the Albanese government, the Territory government, want to maintain uh, Aboriginal people on welfare, on, on, on dependent on governments, instead of allowing them to stand on their own two feet and creating real jobs out on communities. Not a jobs program, but actually opening up for economic development opportunities in remote communities so that there's not this double standard going on. Um, you know, if life got better out at communities, we wouldn't have the influx of people in, in our towns, uh, you know, using the services. Uh, and, and you know what? The Territory is a haven for service providers mm. as well. They siphon off the government just as much as everyone else. This whole structure needs to be changed and the Albanese government is certainly not prepared to listen or make those changes. Um, they continue down the same old, same old. Well, it's 40 odd billion dollars a year, isn't it? We, we spend on what I call the Indigenous industry. And what do we get for it? 
Very little. Um, now, I mentioned Linda Burney before. She was asked by the ABC this morning if she believed that the Coalition would support a Truth and Justice Commission. Here's what she had to say. Well, the the opposition um, is uh, has played an absolute spoilers role, in my view, in Aboriginal affairs. I mean, it was traditionally a bipartisan issue for many years across the parliament. I don't feel like it is now. I feel very, uh, very sorry about that. A spoilers role, Senator. Look, uh, yeah, we, we absolutely, I'm quite happy to spoil uh, the program of the elites and to actually prioritise our most marginalised. If, in fact, a Truth and Justice Commission actually ensured that an Aboriginal kid in a remote community uh, avoided sexual abuse, domestic violence, got an education, finished high school, well, then absolutely, I'd be all for it. But the truth is, a Truth and Justice Commission is just about creating yet another bloated bureaucracy and paying people six-figure salaries who live in places far, far away from remote communities. So I'm sorry, uh, Linda Burney, if that upsets uh, Labor. Uh, if I'm a spoiler, so be it. I'm a spoiler. I don't, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in common sense, practical policies that are going to focus and prioritise our most marginalised. Here, here, Senator Nampajimpa Price, or should I call you the spoiler? Thank you for your time.